Welcome back, Pastoral Touch Points, episode number 14. Yeah. That's right. Okay. Um, we, Rich and I, were so excited for Flannel Friday that we just couldn't wait and we uh, just happened to come in. It was cold. Where, yeah. The weather Risk. can't make up his, his mind. Um, anyway, but we're uh, really glad we got some sunshine today, regardless. And we're excited to be back for episode number 14. At the chairs, we are going to be having, again, kind of part two of our conversation last week, which we didn't plan that, but after we got done and the more we were thinking about it, we thought, you know what, we need to come back to this idea of unity, making sure we're together on this, even though we might have different opinions, or we do have different opinions, okay? So stay tuned. That's going to be a really important conversation for us, because at the end of the day, if we can't come through this thing unified and on the same page together as a body then the devil's going to win, all right? And we don't want that. So anyway, a lot of people have been wondering about Joe and his new romantic interest, right? Yeah. And we found out her name. Mo Joe. Yeah, Mo. And that's not one. That's first and last. That's right. Joe's the last name. First yeah. name's Mo. Mo is short for Maurice. Okay. <laughs> Maurice Joe, okay? Mo Joe and Joe Schmo. Kind of hitting it off, and uh, we actually caught them, Rich actually caught them uh, having a little date. Picnic, yeah. Courting. Yeah. I'm not sure what they're doing. There's music and candy involved. I think so. Joe asked Mr. Joe if it was okay. So anyway, I wanted to give you just a little just clip of that thought. You might find it interesting. I've got sunshine on a cloudy day When it's cold outside, I've got the month of May Well, let me read this beautiful song What can make me feel this way? My girl, my girl Talking about my girl Joe, what are you doing? You, didn't, you can't act like you wrote that song That song was written way back in 1964 By Smokey Robinson and Ronald White Released by the temptations. You can't say you wrote that song, Joe. Okay. Sorry. Okay. Maybe you didn't find it interesting. <laughs> <laughs> but maybe you did. All right. Welcome back. We uh, want to just keep one thing in front of you, really. And that's just the Mountain Joy gift card giveaway. It's probably the biggest thing on our calendar right now. We're really excited about it. And uh, we have a need for a few more volunteers. So again, May 30th is the date for the gift card giveaway. We'll be praying for some good weather. Um, but on the day of the gift card giveaway, we need volunteers to help with traffic flow, uh, hand out information. We need gift card pickers and we need gift card runners. So a variety of different things that we need people to sign up for. And we've got two different shifts. It's a four hour. And milk hander outers. Yes, milk hander outers. Thank you. It's a very technical job and technical name. Um, so we've got all that planned out. It's a four hour block. And so we've had you signing up in two hour, actually two and a half hour shifts to break it in half. Um, so yeah. Sign up, look for that on Realm, and please continue to share the, the word, spread the news about that event, because we want all of those gift cards to get out so that the local businesses actually get that gift card plus some extra business on top of it. So, and then Rich has been interacting with these businesses. Yeah, I, I actually got instructions yesterday from one of our businesses that said, make sure you thank your people uh, for this. This is a big encouragement. Um, I'm finding when I make the contacts and make the calls, uh, the word speechless comes to mind. The, the, some just don't know what to say. Um, and they're just very, very thankful. And, you know, it's it's a part of that foundational reason why we're doing this, to encourage, to make an impact. And it's I want you to know that, that it's happening, uh, largely due to your generosity. So thank you again. On behalf of the small businesses that we're talking to, uh, they want you to know how thankful they are. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's a big deal. So thanks for your generosity. And uh, look for a story in the Merchandiser next week. So we're hoping that gets the word out too. And come on out, pray. We really want to be a blessing to this community that we're a part of. And so uh, may God's name and reputation be glorified through it. That's the goal. All right? Okay. 
Again, thanks for joining us here and stay tuned. We're gonna hop over to the chairs and get back to this issue, the all important issue of unity for us. All right, thanks. Okay, welcome to the chairs. Part two of this concept, this principle for us of unity. And so just to remind you, last week we talked about unity as a body of Christ and why it really needs to be of utmost importance to us. Because if we come out on the other side, not being together, and we let little things divide us, it's, we talked about last week it being uh, a bad testimony. If our neighbors are watching us fight and bicker about non-essential things, then that leaves a bad taste in their mouth, not just for Calvary Bible Church, but because we know and love the Lord and follow Jesus, it leaves a bad impression on them for our Savior. We're not being good ambassadors for Him here in Mount Joy if we're letting something like that really begin to you know, cause a rift between us. And so, Rich and I, we've got four words for you that we're going to cover today. We're going to talk about humility, empathy, sacrifice, and grace. And these are really principles, the more we talked about it, these are principles that are going to be really key for COVID-19 and keeping us together, but they're really just principles for life. That if, as a mature follower of Jesus Christ, if we can demonstrate these things in our marriage, in our relationships at work, then it's going to help us, you know, avoid a lot of conflict and just a lot of brokenness and I like the, the conversations we've been having leading up to these the, this session especially. Um, we, we made a lot of um, took a lot of time thinking about this is a almost a training period, you know, a, a, a time period in our lives that none of us saw coming. But we've been challenging ourselves and you to not waste this season. And, and in terms of these key words in understanding unity, uh, the thing that kept coming up in our conversation was let's. Let's look at this time as, as, as an opportunity to hone in on some of these skills and some of these thoughts um, under, under a, the pressure of where we, what we're living under, but at the same time using it as a wonderful opportunity to grow mm -hmm. and, 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 and mature in some of these areas, some of these disciplines uh, that maybe if this wasn't happening, these disciplines wouldn't be able to be honed in on as, as, as perhaps as, as, uh, as greatly as they could be during this time. So that's, that's helped me. Uh, in terms of uh, preparing for these and, and thinking about this time period. So this this first word, humility, um, I think we both agree that it's kind of the foundational word, the foundational truth to mm -hmm. uh, to kind of act as a catalyst to these other words. And it's, it's not necessarily thinking less of yourself, but it's thinking of yourself less often. Yeah. And, and that as a, as a philosophy, as a mindset, um, almost as a motto, if you will, to, to kind of pan out these other words. But it starts with this, biblical understanding of humility and um, again it's nothing about a, a poor self-esteem or a bad self-image but it's just understanding that biblically speaking it is not about us um, um, it, the the mindset that we need to embrace uh, understanding biblical humility I think is is the ability the uh, the process of of thinking not of you first but uh, others first and, and understanding that process of that we talked about from those key passages last week, um, but putting those into practice, what's it look like? Well, it all of those things operate based on the principle of humility. And, um, it's not easy. It's it's but it's a it's a discipline that we have to learn. And, and perhaps during these times where we're seeing differences of opinion and a lot of tension and and almost hostile uh, reactions to things, uh, boy, it's 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 a challenge to me to keep that mindset of of. Look not only to your own interest, but also to the interest of others, and understanding that through mm -hmm. a biblical grid of humility. Yeah, and we uh, we don't have our Bibles in front of us, but these are biblical principles. I mean, you just quoted Philippians two there, and so don't think that this isn't coming from God's word and just shaping us. Uh, and so humility is word number one, and I like what you said. It's it's thinking of yourself less, and empathy is kind of the opposite of that, where you're thinking of others more. And so if you're thinking of others more and you're demonstrating empathy, you're putting yourself, the way I think of it, is you're putting yourself in someone else's shoes yeah. and being able to see things from their perspective. And so in, in COVID-19, I don't know where you are on this spectrum. We talked last week about these masks and how that can be something that's 
superficial or on the surface, but something that people see and have difference of, differences of opinion on. And um, I'm going to put my cards out there for you just to bring it home a little bit. And I, I'm not a fan of masks. I, I'm not sure how much they help. I'm not a scientist. I don't claim to be or anything like that. Um, but personally, that's kind of just where, where I am. If I, I wear them when I go into the store um, because that's what's asked of me. And when we meet again at this church, I think the plan is that we will be uh, wearing masks. I know for the Mountain Joy gift card giveaway, the plan is to wear masks. So on that day in particular, you'll see me with a mask on. I, I would rather not be wearing that mask, but because I'm putting myself in other people's shoes, preferring them from a place of humility, I'm going to have that mask on. Because if I'm being empathetic, I'm thinking about someone who uh, considers themselves high risk and uh, has a variety of factors in their life. Uh, you know, the coronavirus has taken lives. I, I don't want to make light of that either. And so if, if they're at a place where they are genuinely concerned, I, I want to be able to put myself in their shoes and say, yeah, they've got a really valid opinion. And even though we might see things a little differently, that's, a, that's okay. We can still come together over the essentials. And then in the non-essentials, remember, uh, be allowed to have a difference of opinion, but then demonstrate love and empathy uh, towards the other person. So that's, I mean, a quick example for like life example for me. When, I was, when I'm driving on the road and someone's driving 10 miles under the speed limit, my initial reaction is, ah, let's go. Uh, but I, I always want to remember, I don't know what's going on in that car. It's, it's, it's possible, probably not likely, but it's possible that they've got someone in the back seat with a kidney stone, or I've driven my son around with a broken leg in the back seat, and every little bump, it's just like, so if someone's driving slow, I want to just you know consider the fact that um, they might have something going on in their head or in their heart that I don't know about, and I want to at least you know be considerate of that. What's helped me in some of that, and I'm still learning this, uh, believe me, um, is it, it slows the process down. When we when we start thinking of other issues and other matters and other people, rather than jumping to that quick conclusion, mm -hmm. it, it, we learn to slow the process down and start putting ourselves in their shoes or thinking of others. Mm -hmm. uh, at least for me, it's it's a challenge because then then that snap judgment, that quick word that I regret, yeah. uh, doesn't come out as quickly. Yeah, there's that James one passage. Yeah. Okay, be yeah. quick to listen, slow to speak, slow to anger. All right, and that's, that's wisdom. That's biblical wisdom right there. All right, word number three, sacrifice. Yeah, when we talk about sacrifice, um, you know, again, the time frame that we're living in, uh, many things came to mind with regard to words like opinions, words like preferences. Um, we are operating under a mindset where my opinions, my preferences, my, quote, rights, um, my feelings, um, are, are being set aside, um, being given up, sacrificed uh, for the sake of others. And so when we think of sacrifice in those words, um, we are operating on this basis of for the sake of others. And I think that's one of the key things that will carry us through this, mm -hmm. this, this time frame, thinking about sacrifice, um, it, that it is not all about us. You know, I can't walk around as if it's about me because um, that's not a, that's not a biblical principle at all. But yet sometimes it's easy to go there, especially when we sense that the opinions are different or the preferences aren't being met or the desires aren't being met. We have to have that, that idea that, you know what, sacrificing is in spiritual discipline. I'm not talking about literal sacrificing in the Old Testament sort of way, but you're not sacrificing our, our thoughts, our opinions, our preferences mm -hmm. for the benefit of, of others for the sake of others and again that is in obedience to getting us closer to obedience mm -hmm. to that that principle of uh, thinking of others first yeah no the, we have to sacrifice to get get where yeah. we need to go is it is it pleasant no a sacrifice meant giving yeah. up the best you had right um, and, and offering it you gave and so giving up so that we understand it's not about us mm -hmm. all right final word number four here the word grace and what I mean by that is giving grace to other people in the sense that you're assuming the best in them. 
And so again, bringing it home to COVID-19, if I see someone doing something that offends me, I can assume that they are trying to make a political stance. I can assume they're trying to make a point or do something that's getting, you know, moving the needle in their direction. Or I could assume that they have a genuine good heart about what they're doing and that their motives are not impure. And I think uh, and bringing it back to like just practical life for a second, in any marriage, you need to give your spouse the benefit of the doubt. So if your husband or wife says something that kind of makes you turn your head or, you know, cock your eyebrow up and wonder well, that that kind of stung and what did they mean by that? Well, listen, it's your spouse. OK, and from a very baseline point, I need to assume that my wife has my best interest in mind. So if she says something that, you know, I could take the wrong way or I could take the right way. Well, I'm going to assume that she didn't mean to hurt me. I'm going to assume that she's got my best interest in mind and I'm going to give her the benefit of the doubt there. And so for the coronavirus, again, there's a myriad of different things that you can look at and say, oh, I wonder why they're doing this or look at what they're doing there and just begin to point fingers. And that's not a good place to be pointing fingers, but as opposed to that, just being able to say, you know what? I'm gonna give them the benefit of the doubt because I know them, they're a brother and sister in Christ and I wanna err on the side of grace rather than err on the side of, I'm gonna come down hard on them and think critically about them. Sounds like you had some good Marital counseling. I did. Rich did it. Rich did it. Now, I think the, the comment that I, that I keep coming back to um, is God's grace is going to be the remedy for this. And, and I love that. I know it's, you know, have a lot of thoughts about it. But I just love that because it's focusing on God's grace. It's not that we're going to try harder to get through this or anything that happens other than God doing a work. And God's grace is is the remedy for a, for a lot of this. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I think we're naive to think that everyone in Calvary Bible Church or every brother and sister in Christ, even as a you know, universal church, is going to have the same opinion on anything. Okay, uh, But this in particular, because, because it's the importance of us coming out on the other side, really nailing this and doing it well is so important. We just wanted to spend you know, another segment here talking about just practical things that are going to bring us together. Because bottom line is we're going to be on different sides of things. But that's okay you know that's okay as long as at the end of the day we're we're going forward with our eyes fixed on Jesus and we're taking the gospel out because that's what really matters okay Absolutely. all right hey we love and miss you guys and see you soon yes soon 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 theologically speaking I'm crossing these fingers <laughs>